Hi, this is Jeff Ross, executive producer of Our Story Productions. We're just getting ready to shoot some new shows of Martin County on TV. We haven't shot any for a while because of the coronavirus. We're glad to be back. Hope you enjoy the new shows. Some of the ones we're going to be showing in the near future will be from before the virus and some after. We hope you enjoy them all. Hi, I'm Lindsay Price. I'm the Economic Development Coordinator for the City of Fairmont, and I brought a co-host with me. Hi, I'm Kathy Reynolds, the new City Administrator for the City of Fairmont, and I'm happy to be here and co-hosting this with you today, Lindsay. Let's talk about all the great things that we have going on within the community. In your short time here, what do you think are a couple of things that you could see as priorities for the next 12 months or so that you'll be working on? A lot of the priorities that I'm looking at right now is really just trying to kind of get a baseline of where we're at as a community and where we can look at for, pot for potential, you know, growth and development of the community and really starting to focus in on the downtown revitalization. I believe that's a key part of any community is to really build and grow our downtown and uh, to make it a place to be. So I'm, I'm looking forward to working with the community and uh, business owners to bring about some downtown revitalization. I love that because we actually just got some small cities development program funding to help with downtown revitalization and downtown building rehabilitation. And um, those funds can actually be used for um, any of the building owners in the downtown area. And it's a grant up to $40,000 so um, let's say that a building owner wanted to do a project like a fifty thousand dollar project so they would really be doing a fifty thousand dollar project and it would only be costing them ten thousand dollars isn't that exciting that's great i hope all of our business owners can look at taking advantage of that and really look towards what we can do with them to help them out along those lines and keep our community growing and and developing it's not about growing out, it's about taking what we have and really making sure we're making the best use and doing great things with it. I love that too. Um, I think there's some really great new businesses that have come into the downtown area. For example, Domino's came downtown and they really fixed up the outside of that building and it just makes the whole downtown look a lot more inviting. Yes, it does. And what I hope to do is that we can bring in more events downtown and bring more people down here so they can enjoy and see all the great businesses that we have down here along downtown plaza and in other locations in fairmont great that sounds like such a fun priority doesn't it excited I... to get to work on that one um also along with that small cities development program grant a portion of that is also for residential rehab and for that it's owner occupied single family home owners are eligible for a $25,000 grant to fix up their homes. And that can be used for things like roofing, siding, windows, energy efficiency upgrades, electric, electric plumbing, mm -hmm. things like that. So Lindsay, you talked about the housing rehabilitation funds. Who's eligible to apply for those? So actually, we went around the downtown area and we went door to door trying to get um, folks that were interested. Those who had already filled out those preliminary applications will get something in the mail. And there is a targeted area and it's more in the downtown part. And where are they, they'll get the applications in the mail, but where can they find more information on that program? So Minnesota Valley Action Council is actually going to be administering that program for us and they will be the ones who will be sending that information directly to them. That is actually the same as the business um, assistance for the downtown area as well. Great, so we should look forward to our residential community and our business community getting information in the mail from Minnesota Valley Action Council. So hopefully that comes out to them soon so we can keep all the great progress moving. There's been a lot of interest in the programs and that's actually been able to help us get more funding through grants and such through the state and federal governments. So Looking forward to it. Now I know FIDA has also recently received some money to help out from the CARES Act. How is that being utilized and uh, you know what great things can we do to help our businesses through the, that fund as well? Yeah, so actually because of our relationship with the federal EDA, we currently have a revolving loan fund through them and they were trying to figure out we have some money through the cares act how do we get that into the businesses hands quickly and efficiently 
And the answer was, let's look to those organizations that we have a relationship with currently. And so because we have a current revolving loan fund through the federal EDA, we were awarded over $600,000 to help businesses in Martin County. And those funds can be used for working capital, which generally wasn't allowed. So what we're doing is our specific program is we were, we were allowed due to regulation to um, offer those funds at a no interest and at no origination fee. So it's going to be basically free money. It's going to be a loan. It cannot be a grant or a forgivable loan. So you will have to pay it back, but no interest, that's a pretty good deal. That's a great deal for some of our business owners that they can have an opportunity to get a helping hand with some of this stuff and not have to worry about, you know, the interest in the additional, you know, fees that apply with taking out another loan. And hopefully they can take advantage of it and uh, keep, in, keep in business and keep our community, um, you know, growing. Um, keep our businesses up and working. Those businesses that are eligible are going to be those that have less than 50 employees and priority is going to be given to those that are locally owned. When are those applications going to be out there? Do you do we have a timeline yet? The application is actually on our website right now. You can go to FIDAMN.com and there's a button right on the home page that says COVID-19 and that will take you right to the application. Now in addition to the progress with the, uh, the Small Business Grant and the CARES Act funding for our business community, we have um, work we're doing on housing within the community. Can you talk a little bit about the Housing Institute that uh, we're participating in? Yeah, so um, Fairmont was eligible to participate in the Housing Institute through Minnesota Housing Partnership, and that's an 18-month program. And that program actually is going to help walk us through exactly what project that Fairmont should be working towards with our limited resources. So I'm really excited. We have a great team put together. We have people from the public sector, um, private you know, business owners, and also um, from our school district and our educational community. All of us are working together to see what we can do and really define what our needs are. It should be a really great project and I'm hoping that to see some really great outcomes for the community from this. Yes, and housing is definitely a priority for our community. Yes, it is. We need, we need housing at all levels and at all areas. So really looking forward to what we can do with this institute. Lindsay, we've talked about a lot of great information today. We talked about downtown revitalization and the excitement about seeing what we can do to make Fairmont a great community with some revitalization in our downtown areas. In addition, we talked about a lot of things that are going on with the Economic Development Association. You want to touch on those? Just go through those again for us. So we have the Housing Rehabilitation Program and the Commercial Rehabilitation Program, which are both going to be administered by Minnesota Valley Action Council. Then we have the Revolving Loan Fund through the CARES Act, which is going to be administered by me. That's the $25,000 zero interest, zero origination fee loan program through FIDA. And if you're looking for more information on that, please give me a call at 507-238-3925. Otherwise, you can visit my website at www.fedamn.com. Sounds great. We look forward to getting lots of information and a lot of applications in for those programs. Absolutely. And I just also want to note that because there's so much change happening right now with coronavirus and all the different things happening in the world, if you have a project or you're a business that's looking just for a little bit of extra support, I would really encourage you to contact me. Um, I have a great resource of a number of networks and I would really like to get you in contact with them if you're interested. Thank you so much for co-hosting with me today. I'm really excited that you're here and I wanted to welcome you to our community. We'll see you guys next time. Martin County on TV flashback. Welcome to Hometown Focus. I'm your host, Kathy Evangelista. Strap yourself in for this week's show because we are at the Fairmont Raceway. Every Friday night, these bleachers are filled with race fans cheering on their favorite driver or just looking for a great night of outdoor entertainment filled with plenty of screeches and squeals and howling engines. I'm standing with the promoter of the Fairmont Raceway, Joe Ringsdorf. And Joe, why would you get into that type of business? As a promoter, I originally, uh, I guess, uh, was a racer and uh, I worked for another promoter for 
many years, mm -hmm. and uh, I promote uh, presently three tracks. Uh, mm -hmm. I started at Algona Raceway, and two years ago I started at Fairmont Raceway. Mm -hmm. So uh, I enjoy the business. Uh, it's uh, you try and make it a little more profitable on this side rather than the racing side, and. Uh, uh, it's pretty much a full occupation right now. Mm -hmm. So it does take up a lot of your time. Is it, how many hours would you say you put in a week during racing season? Racing season, uh, it's it's uh, it's phenomenal. I mean, uh, probably uh, 60, 70 hours a week, uh, a minimum, and um, it just goes uh, every day uh, uh, throughout the whole week. Mm -hmm. So you got to love what you're doing, I, su I suspect. You've got to love what you're doing. That's correct, and uh, you got to like the people you're working with and uh, the challenges that you have, and uh, just uh, try and uh, um, enjoy it as it goes. Mm -hmm. Now, um, uh, it, describe a little bit about what a promoter does. I mean, some of the things, I'm sure you do a million things, you wear a million different hats, but what, what would we know you for doing? Well, as a promoter, you have to get your sponsors together, you have to get your classes of cars together, mm -hmm. you uh, have to uh, just organize all your help, uh, mm -hmm. prepare the track. Uh, some promoters don't prepare the track. Uh, I have help in helping me prepare the track, but I, I like to oversee a lot of it. Uh, and uh, I always water the track the day of the race myself, so I know exactly what's going on. And uh, it's just uh, a coordination, like you said, uh, from, uh, you know, there's a hundred things mm -hmm. you can be doing. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's just like yesterday, uh, I was mowing grass, uh, getting everything mowed up uh, up here. And uh, last night, watered the track and mm -hmm. uh, just uh, putting in light bulbs, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, mowing, uh, mm -hmm. cutting weeds and different things, just getting everything ready for uh, Friday night races. Mm -hmm. You just want to make sure it all goes smoothly. That is, I mean, that's the big part of your job is if it doesn't go smoothly, you don't have much to promote, do you? No, that's <laughs> correct. And, you know, you, you've got to make it fun for the for the racers, too, and the fans. And my big philosophy is that uh, we try and run a real fast show, uh, get the fans out of here in time, uh, keep the track moist enough that we don't have to have dust in our faces. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like you're in the entertainment business. You've got to, you've got to keep the, the fans happy. You've got to keep them coming back. And you've got to keep it moving. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think the worst thing a promoter can do is take an intermission. Some people mm -hmm. do. Uh, a five-minute intermission turns into 15 minutes. And then at the end of the race, uh, maybe a couple of your classes, you have some bad wrecks, and uh, it takes you an hour longer than normal. Mm -hmm. uh, fans, uh, you know, they'll sit for two and a half, three hours. Four hours is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. So you've got to, and they have other obligations the next day. They want to get their, uh, get home uh, or go someplace else after the races, whatever their occasions are. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we try and get them in and get them out, entertain them over here. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the fans, what kind of people come to racing? You've got all various types of fans. Uh, you know, I, I think it's a lot of the same fans week in, week out. Uh, it, either you're addicted to racing, just like any other sport. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't miss it. You look forward to it all week. You talk about it at work. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe a couple drivers, you work with them or something like that. Or you, maybe they're on their pit crew and help them out. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's uh, just a, a combination of a lot of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. a, a, a big mixture. Do you see a lot of, um, of kids out here, younger kids too, with their moms and dads or whatever? Yes, we uh, cater to children because uh, we have like a family pass uh, for $20. Uh, our, our adult pass is seven fifty. dollars so uh, if you have two children or more, we don't penalize you for getting into the races. It's 20 bucks. And uh, yes, we definitely uh, see a lot of children out here, and, and it's, it's a good pastime for them. We like to see them out here and, and enjoy the drivers. And, and we've got a cruiser class, which is our bottom class, that uh, uh, a lot of them can get into for relatively uh, any, uh, you know little money, and uh, that's why it's there. If it's an entry-level class. Mm -hmm. So it's fun. It's kind of a learning experience for him too. Do you think it's do you think it's safe for them out here? I'm sure a lot of parents always think, ooh, you know, crashes and things and people getting hurt. How do you think the safety level is? The safety level for the fans is uh, there is no problem whatsoever. I mean, uh, you know, we've got a cement retaining wall here. Uh, we've got uh, uh, steel cables and uh, uh, also a, a fence above that. Uh, absolutely no problem. That's a catch fence in case a tire or something like that would come off. And we've uh, in, uh, put in a new guardrail uh, and new cement walls uh, are out here in the last uh, two years to make it safer for the drivers and the fans. Mm -hmm. And uh, so th there's no problem with the safety feature. Uh, it's just like on the, uh, the drivers, uh, you know, we see, uh, uh, you know, drivers uh, needing assistance sometimes from the ambulance or something like that. 
basically it's a precautionary thing. I mean, it's not that they get hurt that often. And, uh, you know, we've had drivers uh, go over the, the, the guardrail out here this year, last year, uh, and, you know, we've had very few uh, seriously injured people. So, you know, we've got uh, a, f a lot of safety features in these cars, roll cages and, and, and five-point harnesses and things like that. It makes it very safe for the drivers also. And you've got new um, stands, of course. You had to put in the new stands. And um, has that affected how many fans you've got out here? Have you seen more or less? Has it really changed much? Yes, it's made a big improvement, and I really want to tip my hat to the Martin County Agricultural Society for taking on that project because it was a very big project, mm -hmm. and also want to thank uh, a lot of the local people for backing them and uh, helping them out. Mm -hmm. But yes, it has increased the fan, uh, the fans in the grandstand, and uh, you know we anticipate uh, it keep growing. Uh, the last two years, it's just been a growing process. Mm -hmm. um, now you've been out here a while, Joe. Uh, what kind of caliber of racing can we expect to see if we come out? here. Well, you're going to see them very competitive racing. Uh, we run the IMCA modified stock cars and hobby stocks. Uh, modified, uh, w you know, we range. That's the open wheel, the top class. Uh, uh, we have drivers uh, that come in from 100, 125 miles on a weekly basis. So we get some very high caliber drivers, and uh, they put on a great show. Uh, we have uh, stock cars, which I would say are probably the uh, toughest stock car class in the Midwest. Uh, some of the drivers here are, are just uh, uh, really put on a tremendous show. And the hobby stocks, the numbers have been great. Uh, good to see them. We've got a 360 modified uh, class that we just opened up with this year. We're not getting a lot of numbers, but we hope it'll, it'll build. And then we've got the cruisers, which we mentioned earlier, the two-person uh, vehicle that uh, the stands probably is their favorite class. They love to watch that, don't they? Yes, they do. You ever get an itch to get back out there and drive? No, not really. I was never a great driver. I was, uh, uh, you know, I occupied a seat, but uh, I never did much. So <laughs> it was a short-lived occupation. And uh, but uh, you still get to spend a lot of time with the, with the racetrack. You still get to sort of live it, don't you? That's right. Yes, you still get to uh, spend your time on the track uh, preparing it. Absolutely. Hey, thanks, Joe, for being with me today. Well, you wouldn't have a successful racetrack without a few good drivers. I happen to be standing next to one right now. That's Gary Oscarson, and you've been putting in the laps at Fairmount Raceway for about how long now? Uh, basic in the stock car, just uh, this is my second year. Okay, so how long have you been driving Lifeline, you know, lifelong? Basically just these two years and then back in 87 I drove a hobby stock. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What prompted you to get going into, uh, into a race car driving in the first place? Uh, I probably started out with my brother. He was racing for about 20 years and then he finally hung it up and I guess I kind of took over. <laughs> so. What prompted you to do it? I mean, was it because your brother was in it? Has it has uh, have cars always been sort of a big part of your life? Yeah, they have since I work on them day, every day, and mm -hmm. it's a little bit different, but it's enjoyable. Mm -hmm. and I just enjoy doing it. So. Now you said you drove back in '87, and then you stopped for a while. Why did you stop driving? Well, what I did then is that was a, a hobby stock we ran. Mm -hmm. And after that, I bought a modified, and my brother drove the modified for a couple of years, and then uh, Mark Stuber drove it for like three more years. And I've always had a modified, and just I just decided I was going to try to race myself a little bit, and so I bought the stock car, or I built the stock car, and and I've just been doing that since. And mm -hmm. I got a modified coming again, so and then the guy that's probably going to drive that is Willie Kraft from Lakefield. Mm -hmm. And I don't know exactly when that's going to be, if it'll be this year yet, or for sure next year. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I find that, you know, when in talking to some of the guys who drive and, and work with the raceway, that most of the guys who drive also work on cars for other people, or people that work on cars sometimes drive. It's, it's sort of a, its own little community, isn't it? You, you can help each other, some of the other guys out on occasion. Oh, yeah. I, I help some guys out here in a modified. They're just starting out. Bruce Anderson and uh, Todd Ros Rosenberg owns the car. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to help them get through it a little bit better, and mm -hmm. he's come along pretty good. He's getting faster every week. and. Mm -hmm. And that's just part of the deal. I mean, you're not driving for a for a living, so it's it's more. It's would you consider it uh, your hobby? I guess it's definitely a hobby. It's for fun. It's you're not going to get rich racing. Mm -hmm. I just enjoy doing it. I enjoy working on them. I really wouldn't have to drive it, and mm -hmm. if somebody else wanted to drive it, and I felt like backing down, I would do that. And I just enjoy working on them. Mm -hmm. I think, though, that somewhere down the line you'd probably get the bug and want to get back in the car, wouldn't you? I think so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> After doing it, it's a, it's. You want to stay in it. Try to do better every week. And well, now you've been in the in the racing world for quite a while, but like you said, you've only been racing a few years. Um, tell, like, give me some highlights of your racing career. Huh? Have you had any uh, some really exciting wins or some maybe some scary crashes? Tell me a little bit about what's happened. Uh, last year, at the end of the, was right. I think it was the last night. I ended up hitting the tires down here and rolled the car over four times. 
and we were going to try going again that same night, but there was a couple things that were bent up too bad, and we had to park it. And, and then the beginning of uh, this year, I got into the front wall, which is probably in our background, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, that screwed the car up a little bit. But we come back and went back, fixed it, come back, and we're racing again. And mm -hmm. Is it ever, uh, you know, you have to have, be pretty brave, I think, to drive a car out here, knowing that that could happen. Have you ever gotten injured? Are, are you, do you ever get scared? Is it one of those things like when you fall off the bike you get right back on? Or how do you feel when you have a crash? I thought I'd probably be thinking about it a little bit more, but once you're in a car you don't think about it. You just mm -hmm. go and try to get to the front and mm -hmm. run the best you can. Mm -hmm. I haven't uh, won any features out here yet, but I've won some heat races and mm -hmm. it's fun to start in the back and see how far you can get to the front. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you get to know the other drivers pretty well? Oh yeah, I know just I know all of them. I'd say. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And do you ever like you know try to steal driving tips from them or try to figure out how they're winning if you're not? Oh, I ask their secrets all the time, but they don't tell us anything. <laughs> <laughs> tell me a little bit about um, the different types of cars you drive. Now you were telling me a little bit about stock cars. Tell me that, what what all types of cars and races do you do? Basically, I just do the stock car class, and okay. I have been in a modified once or twice. That we just basically come out and played a little bit, but. Mm -hmm. um, this is about the only thing that I really do and enjoy doing, and mm -hmm. that's a stock car. That's about all I've been in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now, you own a, um, a, um, a, a business that works on cars, obviously, your body shop. Um, so you know a lot about maintenance, and how important is it? I mean, how much prep do you need before you actually get going, uh, be able to uh, put your car in a race? Oh, I think most guys will tell you after you race one night, you work on it just about every night out of the week to check things over, make sure things are safe, and there's always things to do on them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What What do you find is the biggest maintenance issue when you're when you're for your stock car? Oh, probably trying to keep the motor going and trying trying to find ways to keep the engine cool. Mm -hmm. He's like to run a little on the warm side, and once a guy figures that out, then there's less problems down the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you haven't driven a lot of different cars, but you, you do have a few different ones and maybe some other ones that you've seen. Do you have a favorite car that you've seen or driven? Oh, that I've seen. <laughs> Probably the, the Modify that uh, I owned a couple years ago. Willie Craft drove it and I brought it out a couple nights and just, I didn't really do any good with it, but I, I drove it and it, it was fun. It, it handled nice and mm -hmm. I just didn't really want to get in anybody's way and so I stayed <laughs> in the back. And, you just kind of are tr you're testing it out, feeling it out a little bit, so to speak. Yep, that's right. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me a little bit about the Fairmont Raceway. I mean, is it uh, real different from other uh, racetracks that you drive? Well, this is probably the fastest racetrack really? around. Mm -hmm. Everybody says that uh, the speeds are just fantastic. You know, you just you really get going, and then I go down and race at Elgona a little bit too, and it's it's not as fast as Fairmont. Do you race pretty much every weekend during the season, or do you take some time off? No, I've been racing every weekend, Friday and Saturday nights. Mm -hmm. They bring the family with? Oh, they're all part of it. Uh, my daughter, she usually gets my helmet ready on Friday and Saturday nights, and we sell parts out of the trailer, so my son takes care of that. And mm -hmm. my wife's a scorekeeper here in Algona. So oh, it everybody, is? Everybody's involved. It's a family affair. It is. It's like your little weekend outing, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Would you ever consider um, making it more than just a, a hobby? I mean, if you had the opportunity to, you know, you got all of a sudden a big sponsor came up to you and said, Hey, Gary, want to drive for me? What would you say? I'd go ahead and do it. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. That's where you make the money, right? You got to get the big sponsorships, yeah, somebody, right? Somebody's got to be paying the driver. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Now I have to ask you before we leave: um, Do you uh, drive slow or fast when you're not driving your stock car? When you're driving your regular car, when you're going to and from running errands, how fast do you drive? Do you follow the speed limit? I probably speed a little bit. I hope the cops ain't listening to this. No. <laughs> you heard it here. It's just a little. Yeah. Just yeah. a little. Mm -hmm. But do you ever find yourself just kind of wandering away, or do you, is it you can easily distinguish between your your vehicles? I would assume. Oh yeah, just the noise factor is probably the biggest thing that you know when you're in here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hey, I'd like to thank you a lot for taking the time out for the interview today. I'm here with the voice of the Fairmont Raceway and some other raceways around uh, around the area too. Lon Elke, thanks so much for coming in today. Well, thanks for coming out. Now I gotta ask you, how did you get started in um, racetrack announcing or race announcing? Tell me the story behind this. Uh, a couple guys bet me, uh, we were at a sale one day and a couple guys bet me that I couldn't do this. Mm -hmm. And I said, well I'm, I'm almost certain I could do it, you know, at least one race. And uh, 
that's pretty much how it started. They talked to one of the promoters at that time. We had five five bosses out here at Fairmont Raceway, and they asked me if I had a demo tape, and I said I'd been in a demo derby, but that was about it. But again, uh, came out and did it. Roy Haven from Blue Earth was doing the races here, and uh, he wanted to kind of slow up and get out of it, and that kind of phased me in, and he phased out, and that's how things got started. Mm -hmm. Now, you've been doing this for about 17 years now, right? Yeah, right around that. My my sons are 17 years old, so I kind of keep track of it that way. Again, it's been 17 years since I started here at Fairmont, and again, it's expanded out to some other tracks. Again, Jackson, uh, Slayton, we've been in Worthington a few times, and again, uh, now at Algonan and Mason City, and then, of course, the series that I do for the United States Modified Touring Series out of Webster City. Mm -hmm. So you've really built this into a, a good sideline, haven't you? And it's, and it's fun, too, isn't it? Yeah, it's been a busy sideline, and we see a lot of different tracks. Again, uh, each and every weekend I've pretty well filled up and again during the week but it's a lot of fun I enjoy it and when it stops being fun that's when I won't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the Fairmont Raceway. How do you like it out here? I mean it's, it's kind of your home turf too I suppose but is this a good place to call races? It is a great place to call races. Uh, we used to do them from the infield again years back and uh, many people the old timers remember that when the grandstand or the infield tower was there but mm -hmm. the wind took care of that we moved it to this side and it's really been a great improvement. It saves me a lot from spinning around because I used to get all wound up in the cord and at the end of the night they used to pull start me to get me to go home pull the ropes out from around my legs but it's improved nicely here and uh, Joe's made some big improvements uh, through the years of guardrail and again this new grandstand area if people haven't been out to see it they don't have to worry about the old Mets Met Center's uh, grandstand seating this is great stuff you can really see nicely and again uh, I've seen a lot of racetracks throughout the last few years and this is one of the finest facilities again for half mile dirt track racing action down at Sunset Speedway in Omaha they've got some nice places, uh, Eagle Raceway, but again right here in this area you won't find anything better than Fairmont Raceway. Mm -hmm. Now, and, and also we have this nice VIP uh, area right, right next to you here. Tell me a little bit about that. You, you have some company up here uh, uh, pretty much every Friday night, I bet. Yeah, I'm spoiled rotten up here. We got air conditioning, of course, the VIP booth next door. Mm -hmm. But the scorers, they do all the lap scoring again from up here. And there's one other announcer that works with me, uh, Rick Atkinson from Algona. He's up here. So we have plenty of stuff going on. The pay gals are up here uh, with the lineups. So everything gets done right here. And again, they radio across mm -hmm. to let the infield people know what the lineups are. So mm -hmm. everything kind of centers right here. And uh, it's a great place to watch from, and I enjoy it here. The fans, you can kind of see a little more what they're up to, mm -hmm. and uh, if they're enjoying it, if they're wondering, what what did he say? Mm -hmm. Did he really say that? And uh, <laughs> and besides, the, the action's a little better from up here. Mm -hmm. Now, I've heard that on occasion, not very often, but there a fight may break out once in a while out there, and do you, uh, do you turn into the uh, boxing uh, announcer at that point? Hi, what do you do when a fight breaks out? I put some music on, like, let's get ready to rumble, you know, like that Michael Buffer. <laughs> yeah, put on the fight song. I mean, it, it, we don't plan it. It's not choreographed. It's not like wrestling. Mm -hmm. it's, it just happens. Again, it gets hot. You get, you get your car run into in a parking lot. You're not going to be happy if somebody comes up and says, well, big deal. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to be upset. Mm -hmm. And the same way with this, except it just escalates a little higher. And yeah. nobody said they were all rocket scientists all at the same time. I mean, you try and pop somebody with a helmet on with a bare fist, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. You should probably wait till the helmet comes off but <laughs> hey um, you know I, I'm not their mothers they they've been born and raised and they're big enough to know what's going on they've got a driver's license they can do what they want to do mm -hmm. but we have had some scraps out here and mm -hmm. not just at Fairmont I've seen them all over where yeah. guys have got out and flung mud and I remember years back when Ron Fox used to flag here again uh, Denny Hovengay mm -hmm. had his car with a wrecker right in the front straightaway so I mean it's not the first time it's happened and it certainly won't be the last but again uh, mm -hmm. it's part of the deal and sometimes that brings a few more fans out just to see the excitement. They like to see uh, the rivalry, I guess you'll call it, again on the track. And hopefully it just stays on the track. And when they get to the infield, again, they can have a cold one afterwards and talk to each other and, and go home in a peaceful manner. Yeah, I mean, it brings up obviously the, you know, the excitement of the whole deal. You know that they're intent on winning. They want to win. They're upset that they're not winning or they've been crashed into, right? Now, um, in preparing for a race, is there such a thing? Are you, you've been doing it so long, you don't really need to. You know all the drivers. You know what's going on. Tell me a little bit about when you come up here when, before the race starts. I probably should. I don't know. <laughs> no, at Fairmont, after a while, you kind of get used to it. Mm -hmm. You know, each night after a couple, three nights, you kind of get used to a car, the mm -hmm. color. Uh, you get used to that number or whatever it is every announcer has a different way of doing it mm -hmm. I just kind of look at a color and I know who that is uh, the hardest thing I have is maybe with some of the names where uh, mm -hmm. they couldn't pronounce my name and I'll, I'll have the mother come up you, you didn't pronounce my son correctly I said well you say my name what does it look like and she can't get mine well if I can't get hers then she can't get mine then it's a wash
Josh. But uh, again, we tried. You get to Ignashevsky mm -hmm. and some of these other names. Uh, it gets to be a mouthful, but mm -hmm. they all understand. We try and remember that. But in, as far as preparation, I'd come out before the races, walk through the infield, mm -hmm. and after, like we said, a few weeks, you remember who's who and who's doing what. And uh, the rest just falls into place pretty much after that. I suppose after you've been doing it for a while, it's not it's not so t difficult. It's not like you're stressing out before the race starts. What, what am I going to say? You pretty much know what you're going to say, don't you? I'm pretty. I'm never under stress too much. <laughs> I, it doesn't seem I I enjoy it. Uh, some of the other ones, like going over to Otana when you do the go for 50 over there, the, the late model show when you when you bring in people that you don't see maybe only once a year. That's a little more. Um, things you have to line up, walk through the infield and get more names, where they're from, who the sponsors are, and that's a big part of it. Again, we can't thank our sponsors enough here at Fairmont Raceway, mm -hmm. all the signboards, and again, in our program, and on the guys' cars. We try and make sure and plug those guys because mm -hmm. they help support those guys that support us here at Fairmont Raceway, and we couldn't do without them. It's all one big piece of the puzzle, and, and I'm just a small piece of it, and again, I really enjoy it here. What would you say is the, um, the I guess, the, the biggest part of your job? What are you trying to do here? Are you just trying to make clear who's winning and who's losing, I mean, what would you say is the most important thing in your job? There's only one winner. You can ask somebody after the races and they say, well, it was a good race, who got first, second, third, but they only care who won. Okay. That's all that matters is who wins. Mm -hmm. And again, they're second and third and they're trying, but again, first first mm -hmm. place, that's what they're looking at. And uh, as long as it's a good race, competitive, mm -hmm. that's what I look for in a race. If it's good, close, it doesn't matter, first, second, third, or fourth. As long as there's a good battle there, that's, that's what folks come to see and uh, mm -hmm. that's what they'll see every Friday night right here at Fairmont Raceway. Hey, I'd like to thank you for taking the time out today. Well, that wraps up Hometown Focus for this week. I'd like to thank all of my guests for showing us around the Fairmont Raceway, especially Gary here, who was kind enough to give me a ride back to the office. You do know the speed limit around here, don't you, Gary? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. You all have a great week. I'm going for a ride. Martin County on TV flashback. Well, there you have it, another episode of Martin County on TV. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we welcome you to tune in again. Thank our sponsors for making this happen, and remember, it's not just the past, but the present that tells our story.